Hi everyone, hump day. Happy Wednesday, happy new release day, happy hump day. 2021-22 Panini Mosaic Road to FIFA World Cup Soccer coming at you. Brand new release, six box, half case break, pick your team, one. It's a six box break, all card ship. We sold a 15 spot combo. There's the list right there. Big thanks, I'll show you the list again. Big thanks everyone right here. Thanks everyone. Louie, Last Spot Mojo, that 15 team combo featuring this group of teams right here. It's a good group of teams. Thanks to everyone for getting their spots straight up. I, I was threatening a filler, but no, the, the straight up spots won out, which I appreciate. All right, half case from a fresh case. There it is. I think there'll be a, a lot of World Cup related, uh, World Cup related soccer stuff coming out over the next couple months. Only 46 days to the opening match of the World Cup, ladies and gentlemen. That's it. That's uh, it's about a month and a half or so, right? All right, so here is a group of six right here and a group of six right over here. We'll roll this die. One, two, three for the left side, four, five, six for the right side. Five. We're going to do the right side here. <clears throat> and this side will be for break two. Which is in the store right now. As you can see, I marked those two right there. Um, and it's going to go into, if you're watching live, it's going to go into a filler at the end of this break. So if you were I, if you're leave these right here, if you're if you were eyeing a team, I would suggest just getting them now, straight up, so we can do another one of these. Gilo, what's going on? Now we did have before we get get into the World Cup, we did have a lot of uh, Champions League action in the last uh, in the last couple days what are some what were some champions league results that jumped out at you ladies and gentlemen there's a lot of matches we're still in the group stages here i guess benfica and psg with a draw today chelsea took care of business against ac milan juventus 1-3-1 man city's just cruising real madrid won Borussia Dortmund won. Looks like comfortable victories uh, for all of those folks. Yesterday, Bayern Munich won comfortably. That Ajax-Napoli game was actually kind of crazy. I was sort of keeping an eye on that. but um, So Ajax opened, scored in like the ninth minute. And they were leading Napoli 1-0 all the way up to, I think maybe it was just 1-1 by the half. And then Napoli... And then Ajax shipped five more goals in the second half, and they lost 6-1. That was crazy. Tottenham ended up with a nil-nil draw against uh, Eintracht Frankfurt. Right, and yesterday Inter beat uh, Barca 1-0. Barca blowing it. Ref's terrible for both teams, says Diego. But, yeah, Barca should have put one in the net. And then uh, my club, Liverpool, beating the Scottish team Rangers 2-0. Um, pretty solid game for them. That kind of sort of a... Uh, Liverpool's been a little inconsistent this season. Hopefully that, that was their sort of get-right match before they face Arsenal this weekend, which is going to be a tough one. Oops, sorry, let's slide it. Former Liverpool player Luis Suarez up there. And here we go. Remember, all cards ship. Now, it's worth probably looking up a lot of these uh, these rookie cards as well. Nice. Chris Richards for the United States. Scripts. How many are in here? What are, what are, we, what are we looking for here? One autograph per box on average. 
We're looking for silver, mosaic parallels, ultra rare stained glass. So stained glass sounds like they're ultra rare and overdrive inserts is what the box says. Uh oh, Mock Tiger needs a refund. Didn't realize, yeah, you're, you're dealing with a Liverpool supporter. And the red parallel is not numbered. Who do you support? I think the only other soccer fan here is Nick Jaspi, maybe, and I think he is a uh, he is a Chelsea supporter. Um, the entire shop is all Chivas, though, if you're into that. I don't know what those uh, rookie silvers are going for, but we'll, we'll, we'll take care of those. And we're also looking for just some low numbered cards as well. We'd love to see some low numbered cards. Not too many Erlen Holland cards. Maybe there's a lot more rookie silvers than I thought. Holland goes to Norway, of course. And we've got a Pedri overdrive insert. Now they say these are ultra rare according to the box. Let's see, let's see how ultra rare these are, but there's there's Pedri. Prism Overdrive. Yeah, he's a Barcelona guy. This goes to uh, Diego in Spain. Let's go through these boxes. Let's just see how 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 uh, how short printed those are. Why do I like Liverpool? Well, um, back way back in the early two thousands, late nineties. United States soccer wasn't very good, so I watch a lot of uh, watch a lot of uh, English soccer, and uh, really liked the play of Michael Owen, who was a who was a young uh, young striker at the time, just banging in goals and really really pacey, really good player. Injuries kind of slowed him down over the years, you know, but really liked his play, and a little bit later on. Guys like Steven Gerrard I really liked. They were Liverpool players, and so so yeah, and that's why I ended up supporting that club, those individual players. Guys like Jamie Carragher, also part of it, Fernando Torres. So just a lot of players I liked watching who were, uh, who were on those Liverpool clubs. So that's why, yeah. And I'm a big Beatles fan. That, that kind of worked too. They're from Liverpool. All right, next box. I'm not in the Yahoo Fantasy, Fantasy what league? Which league? The Premier League league? I'm in, the, I'm in a Yahoo, or I'm in a, I've done Fantasy Premier League on the EPL site for a little while, but I didn't do it this year. I don't know if they have Genesis or Nebulas like they do in the other sports. I guess we'll find out. A lot of debate on what, uh, what football club the Beatles support. I think I think for the most part they were kind of like, you know, they were kind of like uh, hippie musician types, artsy types. So I, I don't think they were really into the football. Although McCartney says that he's, he, McCartney has said that he was he went to like a, 
a, uh, a Liverpool FA Cup match way back when. But I like a lot of families in Liverpool. I think, I think there's, it's a big rivalry, but there's enough people that are on both sides of that rivalry. A lot of, uh, a lot of people support Liverpool and then a lot of people support Everton. So there's inevitably like someone's uncle or your cousin or something like that is, is, uh, is that. So I think uh, the ever the diplomat, I think Paul McCartney has always said that he supports both teams nowadays. I don't think Ringo really cared. I don't think Lennon really cared. I think George is more into, he's, he's a car guy, George Harrison, so I think he was more into F1. All right, some rookie parallels here. You know, who knows what these uh, what these youngsters can turn to be the next Paul Pogba. Never know. All card ship. And if you get one of these rookies, it might be worth, you know, kind of keeping an eye on their matches, Brazil. That's going to go to Craig. And just seeing if, I don't know, I don't know too much about Gabriel Barbosa, but he can make a name for himself in the World Cup. And that definitely increases visibility, secondary market value, all that sort of stuff. Pitchmasters. Gilo just knows the big names, but he likes the way, uh, what, Cristiano Ronaldo, how he carries himself. There's a Jefferson so, uh, Soteldo for Venezuela. That's part of the combo combo group. There's Marquinhos. Silver Lionel Messi. That's for Argentina. That's for Matt. Again, don't know what those go for, but that might be uh, Messi's sort of last World Cup card, if you kind of think about it. I don't think he's going to be playing another one, right, in four years? I don't think we've seen our autograph yet, one per box. That numbered? It is. I was like, that's a gold parallel. That's got to be numbered. And that is for Norway. And it's a nice low number, too. This is going to go to Rob and Norway. That's uh, 2 out of 10. And that's Alexander Sorlov. That should be the auto coming up here. And that's going to be Harry Kane. Nice autograph for Louis in England. The Three Lions. It's coming home, Louis, maybe? It's coming home. It's coming home. It's coming. Football's coming home. Nice Harry Kane. All right, next. England's one of the favorites. They 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 were they were just some penalty kicks short of winning the Euro, but you know they're they're a little bit older and wiser now. Could be a pretty strong team in the World Cup. Hmm. 
Hmm, Mock Tiger listening to the uh, White Album a lot recently. That's a good one. Although I wonder <laughs> if they didn't make it a double album, they made it, they cut some songs. If that might have been, uh, although I do like the variety nowadays, but I wonder if at the time, if they cut some songs, if we know it, knew it like that, how well it would be, I don't know. Still good though, I'm a big Beatles fan, so. They're, uh, I think there's a reissue of the of Revolver, I think, coming out. There's like a $200 like box set or something like that that I've been mulling, but I don't know if I'm gonna get it. All right, David. See you, man. Have a good one. Thank uh, you. Yeah, Gilo. That's that's the uh, that's the promotion relegation system, which has been in place for for a long time, long time, long time. We got ooh, Thierry Henry. For Le Bleu, that goes to Adam and France. An amazing player, Thierry Henry. Some of you remember him from his Arsenal days, scoring absolute peaches. That's pretty awesome. Um, Yeah, there is a uh, promotion relegation system. Mr. Flyhard, that's right. Adam, congrats. Here's one for the Netherlands. Ah, that was Zinedine Zidane who headbutted the uh, the Italian player. kind of sad because he's one of the greatest midfielders of all time and uh, for the general public that's that's all he that's all he may be known for at least for Americans maybe but he ended up being uh, coach uh, manager for Real Madrid and won a bunch of trophies there so I think uh, I think he's kind of shed that that sort of last moment of his career sort of thing. Yeah, Gilo, a lot of people like will learn about, uh, and here's Brian Reynolds for the United States. A lot of people will discover the, will discover the uh, promotion relegation system and they're like, yeah, we should do it in the United States. But I think the European leagues, they've been doing it so long that that's just part of the system. But, you know, but what they don't have is like a draft system, right? So I think economically, I don't know if it would if would it would really work because the lower league systems aren't structured to be to be that. You know, the gulf between a triple A team and the like the gulf between a triple A baseball team and a major league baseball team is far greater than a Premier League team and the next tier down, a championship level team. Like the top championship level team, you know, could, could filter into, that's why it kind of works. But the tri our baseball system, for example, isn't structured for that. There's no minor league or there's no division or tier system for the NFL. So we'd have to complete, create a completely new structure. I don't know why that was flipped around, but we'll sleeve that anyway. So I, I don't think we're, just, we're the United States is just not set up for it. It'd be interesting though. Brian Reynolds for the United States, Darren. You know, we've got a we've got a pretty nice young core coming up the ranks in the international system on the men's side, so I can see the United States making a little noise. If not this World Cup, then the next World Cup when it's here. <laughs> Ain't no one got time to watch Cincinnati Reds, says Sheila. The problem is where do they where are they gonna go? If they get sent down, what triple A team gets called up? 
You know, the AAA teams are all are all like in different divisions and different leagues and whatnot. So there's really no there's really no way to promote a team. Right, if the Sioux Fall Canaries get promoted, they'll probably get relegated almost immediately the next season, and up come the Reds again, you know, so we're just not equipped for it. And I don't think the owners would ever go for it. At this point, the owners would never go for it. Back in the early 1900s, you know, when there was promotion and relegation, you know, it's a little, it was, it's a little different. The economics of sport was a little different. But since we didn't, since in, like baseball didn't grow up with that system, we didn't grow up with that system in the early 1900s of baseball, it just doesn't work. I mean, even the worst team in baseball is still probably a billion dollar franchise, right? So imagine the financial consequences of losing TV money and all of that going to the AAA. It just, won't, it just wouldn't work. How did the no draft thing work? Well, those, there's no, there's no, uh, there's no college system there. You know, a lot of times players are identified when they're like nine, 10, 11 years old. And so, I mean, I, I don't know anything about, well, no, the, here's Eden Hazard's brother, Thorgan Hazard, right? So he probably got scouted along with his brother at like nine years old. A lot of times these will get these will get these guys will get sent to academy a youth academy system so you know he's belgium and if he got signed by maybe his hometown team maybe had a academy system so he'll go through there he'll take all he has all his education there and just train in soccer Ooh, look at that a one of one kareem benzema Ooh. Wow, Adam with Le Bleu, with France, and all aboard the Big Hit Express. Whoop, whoop. For who says Mr. Flyerhawk? You you said you had France. Adam Wallman with France. You got the Thierry Henry, you got the one of one Kareem Benzema. Pretty nice. You're welcome, man. Hey, thanks for getting in. What up, Jack? Yeah. Um, I need to catch up on some, some uh, episodes of Welcome to Wrexham, but. But yeah, the, the whole relegation thing, for them, the financial impact could be even even bigger. But to go back to what Gila was asking, yeah, the youth system is what they do. The academy system is how they develop players. A lot of times they're signed really young, go through an academy system, and then, uh, you know... And then they work through the, the under 12 level, under 16 level, under 19 levels. There's different age groups. They'll play a lot of competition. They'll do all their tutoring and training, get their education there as well, courtesy of the club. So they're, they're built to do all that. Whereas we draft and then, I guess for baseball, for example, we draft and you know they develop through the, the minor league system or they can go to college. What do, what do you need me to do, Mock Tiger? Should I, should I take off my shirt? Do some more yelling? Run around the shop? Man, we got, you gotta act like you've been there before. And we have. There's Pau Torres. Scripps autograph for España. That's for Diego. I might break my neck doing a backflip. Mr. Flyerhawk knows nothing of Kareem Benzema. You just got France for Mbappe? 
There's Lewandowski right here for Poland. I feel like there's not a lot of these numbered cards, right? Uh, Kareem Benzema is a pretty top player. Yeah, Mickey's right. Look him up. Go to the YouTube, look him up. Oh man, did I not do a train whistle? That I forgot to do. I was, guess I was so excited about this product. I'm all over the place. Mr. Fly Adam, all aboard the Big Hit Express. Whoop whoop. Just shorten train whistles. Now, Gilo, there's also the, the transfer system. You know about that? They don't do trades, they do transfers. So you pay the club a fee to buy a player, essentially, and then, and then you do the, the, do the actual salary for a player. So let's say there's a club that doesn't have a good youth academy system, right? So then they can just look at some other team's good academy system. They may have a surplus of talent. And then uh, you can buy the player for X amount of dollars, whatever the fee is, which I guess essentially covers their education, their training, their development, all that sort of stuff, and then some. And then maybe future value right here. So it would be like, I mean, there are free agents, but it would be like, let's see, Gilo is a Royals fan, Kansas City Royals fan. So it would be like if the Dodgers said, hey, we are interested in Bobby Witt Jr. And then, you would, then the Royals would say, well, Bobby Witt Jr. is going to cost you $50 million just to, to the club just, to, just so we can trade him to you. And then the Dodgers would still have to figure out a salary for Bobby Witt Jr. The personal terms. Correct. January is the uh, one of the trans. That's the winter transfer window, Jack. And then the summer transfer window. So when all the leagues are done, from the summer to the end of August, I think, is the other transfer window. So summer and winter transfer window. So when you see stories like Jack Grealish of West, West, West Ham United, Aston Villa maybe? Jack Grealish, uh, Man City bought him for 100 million pounds or something like that. So that's Manchester City paying the other club 100 million pounds, right? Just, just to get the player. Then you still have to figure out what am I, what am I gonna play the player, player salary-wise on a year-to-year -year basis or week to week as the case may be. And we got 16 out of 49, Solomon Rondon. That is for Venezuela. That's part of the combo team that'll go to Louis. Yeah, there is a similar comparison, Mike Tower, in the baseball world for international players. Like, that's probably the closest example that we have here in the U.S. would be paying the posting fee to like someone in Japan to get the rights to sign the player. That's absolutely correct.
Yeah, Wrexham actually just, I think they just lost to the team, I think Knott's County, I think to the club that is just above them. So there's different promotion and relegation rules for each of the, 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 the tiers, the different divisions. And I think for a lot of the for a lot of the divisions, I think like the top team outside of the Premier League, the top flight, the top team usually advances directly to the next tier. And then the next four four to six teams will be involved in some sort of playoff. So Wrexham's goal is to avoid the the you know, the variance that could happen in a, in a playoff and just win the league outright and then go to the next level. And that could yield, that could get them, here's a, that one for Belgium, rookie silver for Brandon. That could get them, that could maybe double, triple the value of their club just right, just by being promoted. And we got uh, Americ Laporte for Spain. Another one for Diego. Oh, not Knott's Berry Farm, Mike Tower. Show some respect to Knott's County. That club's probably been around decades longer than Knott's Berry Farm. Here's Jao Felix for Portugal, 1999 Prince. Al with Portugal. One of, one of the, uh, one of the uh, young stars for that Portuguese team, along with Diogo Jota and others, playing alongside Cristiano Ronaldo. They got a good blend of old of uh, old, Cristiano Ronaldo's old, of veteran talent and young talent. There's Diago Jota. Hmm. Uh, grading a one of one, that's, that's a debate. Some people say, some people like to say, why grade a one of one? There's really nothing else that needs that, to compare it to, which is why you would grade it. Some people just like to grade it just to protect the card itself. But I don't know. Ultimately, I feel like it's kind of personal preference. A nice Ricardo Pepe, red. That's one of the... Uh, and this is his rookie card, too. This is one of his... Uh, this youngster is one of the uh, star players, Americans coming up. It'd be funny if England had a rule where if a team got caught doing something illegal in the system, they could re-regulate, relegate, depending on severity. Uh, that can happen, Brandon. If they go into, if a club goes into administration, which is the fancy way the English call uh, bankruptcy, if you go into administration, um, I think you can lose, you can get kicked down, you can lose a ton of points and kick down a couple levels. I feel like that's happened to like Leeds United, something like that. It's a, it's a serious financial impact, uh, penalty, and loss of divisions as well. So financial solvency um, is important. In, uh, in football, in soccer. I don't think so. I don't think they got relegated. Juventus has been the top flight in Serie A for, for decades. All right, final box, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, pick your team two in the store right now, jazbeescasebreaks.com. We'll go into a filler shortly after this. So if you want to get your team straight up, now is the time, jazbeescasebreaks.com if you're watching live. A lot of great stuff. Great first half so far. Could be this guy's last World Cup too. Remember, all card chip. And we also have a, uh, a random team version of this as well.
29 out of 99, Guillermo Maripan uh, for Chile. And that will be for the combo team, Louis, with Chile. So you're saying uh, don't buy a bunch of sports cards. Try to run a soccer team one at once. Well, I mean, that's, that's what, that's what uh, Rob McElhenney of It's Always Sunny and Ryan, Ren Ryan Reynolds are trying to do with that Wrexham club. That, I think, is maybe division, if you go by numbers, maybe division five or something like that. Yeah, so there are different ways to play it. Sometimes a, a, the division two team that goes, that goes to division one, they usually, generally speaking, they don't last too long. They maybe last a season or two. But the money that they make in the Premier League, even though they get kicked down, the money they make in the Premier League is enough to re just change the entire team. They can afford to renovate stadiums, get more people through the gates, you know, try to pay more players, pay better players to try to get back into the Premier League. So for teams that aren't financially equipped to stay in the Premier League, this is for Australia, this is for, for Louis. Um, if they're in the if they're in the second division and they go up to the first division for a season or two, and they kick back down, they can use the savings there, the money there, to 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 improve the team, try to get back into um, try to get back into the first division and try to stay there a little bit longer. And then from there, you ultimately try to become a mid-table team consistently. And they try to get into European action with the Europa League. And then there's like another, there's a third European League, right? There's Champions League, Europa League, and one more. Try to get there. That gets you more money. And you try to get into the Champions League. That gets you more money. Try to win the league. So the beauty of it, and there's Donny van de Beek for the Netherlands. That's for Eric Jennings. So the beauty of it... Theoretically, you could be at the very bottom level of the English football pyramid or the European football pyramid in their particular countries, and you can work your way up to the top, theoretically. 1 out of 25, Jordan uh, Lotomba for uh, Switzerland. That's part of the combo group, Louis, with the combo group. Got a couple rookies here. We got Josko Vardial for Croatia. That's part of the combo. And then we've got uh, Presnel Kipembe for France, for Adam. Let's see what we got to finish off the first half of this case. There's Jakob Motor for Poland. It's a nice clean looking set here, ladies and gentlemen. So get into it on jazbeescasebreaks.com. There you go, gang. I'm Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. Really enjoy the soccer talk and a new release always gives us a nice excuse to talk the footy. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'm Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com, and I'll see you next time for the next footy break. Bye-bye.